Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm back again with some more Berry Bloodline builds as we need to fill these videos up so more players can try them out and experiment with them. Today's build is going to be arc focus based around the Warlock subclass and this time it will be combining the devour effect of Berry Bloodline with Arc Souls so that it can provide a consistent source of health regen and ability regen as we play. This here will allow a more autonomous nature for the two items as we'll refresh the devour effect as long as our arc souls get the kills. Adding this with Fallen Sunstar as well, to the enhanced iron traces, and you'll get a build that can provide devour, enhanced grenade regen, fast PT regen via iron traces, and a 10 to 40% enemy damage reduction via our selected weapons. So let's go over what you need to do to make this amazing build work. To start, you're going to want to have Arc Soul, where casting your rift will grant you and allies a Arc Soul. While amplified, your Arc Souls fire faster. Then you want Electrostatic Mind, where defeat a target with Arc Abilities or Jolted Targets creates Iron Traces. Collecting Traces makes you amplified. The Arc Souls, along with the Iron Traces effect, will allow us to have a supercharged Arc Souls at all times, which will be used against the minor to major threats. This, along with the constant devour effect on our build, will also allow us to cover some of the core issues that plague arc builds in general. For the fragments, Spark of Recharge, where upon reaching critical health, your melee and grenade recharge rate get drastically increased for a few seconds. Spark of Magnitude, where lingual grenade durations are increased. A Spark of Ions, where defeating jolted targets create ion traces. A Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. It is recommended to have as many ways of producing ion traces, just so that our fallen sun star effect can see use. With grenades such as storm grenades being active, this with spark of ions will make the build produce enough ion traces to give us back around half the needed energy to run our grenade or the other abilities. This sounds low at first, but once you add in the mods and also spark of recharge effect tactically, you can easily get a full grenade back even with our buried bloodlines effect even kicked in. For the mods and stats, both Discipline and Recovery will be the main stats to focus on for today. If you have the armor or slots available, then do also improve your resilience as well as much as you can. Your recovery at tier 10 will grant you a 48 second rift cooldown upon use, although this will be further reduced with the Arc Souls aspect as well. Since this is one of the core stats that worked for you respect into, naturally you won't need a lot of mods to enhance its effect any more than shown. Having bolstering destination for the 12% buff and distribution for a 4% overall buff will be simply enough. A discipline at tier 10 will grant a 1 minute 1 second cooldown when using storm grenades. The grenades have good coverage and damage against large groups of enemies in one spot, so using this to gather multiple iron traces as we play will be beneficial for the build. Like with a lot of my builds, having the Grenade Kickstart mod for a 34.4% energy regen will be the play for heavily boosting this one stat. Outside of this, you don't really need to add anything else as Iron Traces, which are now buffed by Fallen Sunstar, will grant further grenade energy return, while Devour and the secondary effect will make collecting grenade energy as we play even more easier and less tedious to activate. Over long periods, this actually pays off well when you want to use a preferred mod of your choosing instead. For the armor charge to retain the following system we have in play, charged up will allow us to hold on to more armor charges we play and collect them, while stacks and stacks will increase orbs of power pickup from 1 to 2. Having the elemental charge, a reaper and powerful attraction mod will grant additional options for getting orbs of power outside of our area expertise. And then lastly, having the Heavy and Special Ammo Finder mods will drastically help with allowing both our Special and Heavy to last much longer when being used wherever we are in game. For weapons, I have two primaries that I want you guys to pay attention to when being used in the build. The first one is the Fel Taradili built with Archer's Tempo and Explosive Head. This is a bow that can be crafted and is a nice bow to have that covers some of the core perks needed for most bows for end game. This is being used for the anti-unstoppable option for GMs, but also because of his origin trait that provides a 10% weakened debuff against targets hit by it. This buff will weaken enemies damage output for a short duration, which works out really well when used with a build that focuses on enhancing damage. At the same time, having the lethal abundance AR with slice is also a good option to have for an anti-overload champions, 
but also for the 40% target's outgoing damage reduction. Both of these weapons play well when used within our Arc Souls territory, as we can keep a consistent source of empowerment to help me and my team keep on going. Then the secondary is the Berry Bloodline Sidearm that will provide a consistent source of devour when active. Upon activation with our Arc abilities in tow, the ability will keep a consistent source of health regen and grenade regen going for as long as we can sustain it. Combining this with Arc will provide the best consistency of ability regen as long as our jolt effect is kept going. Further combine this with our Zotka armor, and you'll see this build become even more lethal over time. A nice conclusion when it comes down to combining two exotics that fix the overall issue that Arc subclasses suffer from. With added on healing factor coming from Berry Bloodline's Devour effect, Arc subclasses survivability rate gets drastically increased in more harder content. Although Arc subclass is more defined with his hard hitting attacks that can escalate over a given time frame, their survivability option for damage reduction, the healing, is severely lacking when compared to the Void or Silla subclasses. This one small option added to the subclass and build allows the build to keep all of its benefits and more, which pairs wonderfully when you are aware of how good the Jordan effects is. So when it comes to the build overall, it's going to provide the exact thought you may have in mind when using your Arc subclass to a higher degree. Making use of the Arc Souls along with grenades is going to be the main source of power that the build will provide to the user when used against targets and with the Fallen Sunstar and our traces active, this will allow our BD energy to flourish at a higher rate. However, adding the Devour secondary effect and providing additional grenade energy will allow the build to be more aggressive when it comes to gathering and collecting energy as we play. From the gameplay you've seen, you'll see my Arc Souls are able to replenish the Devour effect once it becomes active, and along with the Arnold Traces in tow, this will boost our ability to spam our heavier grenades a lot more often. To then top this off, since you will be using your rifts a lot, combining this with a weapon that provides a debuff against targets will also drastically help with the survivability of the build as we play. As mentioned before, using the weapon with the Psycho Hack or Slice Perk will help the build with its aggressiveness and allow takedowns of the more challenging enemies to be more easier. What you get once everything is combined is a build that self feeds itself over a long period of time while also allowing wide use of its capabilities outside of end games such as PvP. It does amaze me how good Berry Bloodline Exotic Effect is once it becomes active in whatever build you have in mind, even though the perk may seem basic at times. Arc build can heal, but this tends to be based around the exotic armors that allow you to do this. With such a build shown, it allows more freedom in what armor you want to use, and from there, if you want to use this in say PvP, or Gambit, or even seasonal activities, then sure, you can. Overall, look out for more builds like this from me in the near future. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared, then please leave a comment below. While at the same time, if you enjoy the content, and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.